what's up guys, back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to teach you more about enumerations. Alright, so the first thing I want to show you is pretty basic, but I want to show you that you can actually declare a enumeration and a variable using that enumeration all in one line. So in the normal way, we would do something like enum color, and we would get some colors here, so red, blue, pink, yellow, and purple. And also I've seen that, um, well I've seen, some, I've seen some different things from different sources, but in terms of the naming, um, you could also do all lowercase. That's the convention I've seen on other places. I have also seen the convention as being all capital. So it's, I don't really know, but I think the modern convention is to do all lowercase actually. So that's what we'll do at this point. And that's also what Visual Studio is trying to tell me to do also. So I guess we'll just follow that from now on. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, so this is how we make a simple enumeration called color and it has some enumerators of different colors, obviously. So now let's look at how we can make a variable of that type. So we'll just make color, color one. And we could say color one is equal to blue as the initial value. And um, what's the problem here? So blue cannot resolve symbol blue. All right, because it needs to be lowercase blue. There we go. So color, color one is equal to blue. So we have a simple variable of the type color with the value of enumerator blue. So let's look at an easier way we can do this. If you just get rid of this here, you can uh, get rid of the semicolon on the end here. And after you declare the enumerators and put the ending uh, curly bracket here, you can give it the names of the different variables you want to have of that same co color type. So let's say we want to have color one. So we would just put color one and then semicolon. So what this is going to do is it's, it's going to make the color enumeration. It's going to give it all the enumerators and define it, but it's also going to give you a variable of type color one or of type color, but called color one. So we could do color one and say color one is equal to pink. And that would be perfectly valid because color one is indeed a variable that we have created alongside our enumeration here. And if we want to, we can print this out just for testing purposes. So see out color one and print this to the console, see what we get. And we get the number two, which is perfect because that's exactly what we expected. So two, zero, one, two, and zero base, right? And uh, yeah, that's how you can do that. But you can also do, um, you can also give this an initialization uh, value if you want to. So you can say color one is equal to pink also there if you want to. So you don't have to declare it under that. So just fix this. And now you could do, you can print it out and you'll still get the value of two into the console because you're creating the, the variable of color one and giving it the initial value of pink, which is in a valid enumerator of the color type. So you could do that. And you could also uh, declare multiple variables if you want to. So instead of color one, you could also do color two. And they don't have to have initial values if you don't want them to. But of course, if we don't give it an initial value, we're gonna have to uh, eventually assign it a value before we use it or print it out. Um, so we could do color two is equal to yellow. And that would be perfectly valid. So if we just copy this, paste it, and say color two, we should get uh, two and three into the console. And that's exactly what we get, perfect, good. So that's how you could do that. You could also give this the initial value, like I said before, so yellow, and that would be perfectly valid also. And you can actually make these constant if you want to, but this will make all of them constant. So not only will color one be constant, but this will be constant too. So just uh, use that however you want to. So you can see that it's constant because if you look down here, color one has a, uh, it says expression must be a modifiable value and it's not because it's a constant, which is declared right here. So basically anything that follows this will be a constant variable, okay? Yep, so that's how you can make enumerations and variables all on one line. So that's uh, very concise and easy to work with. And let me just give you one more example. So if you do enum food, we can have some foods here. And by the way, you don't actually have to declare enumeration inside of the main method or inside of a method in general. You can make it global if you want to. So we could say a num food and that will be available to every function in our class here. Or in this case, we're not in a class right now. We're just in the main file. So this will be available to any uh, method in the file. Okay, so a num food and we could say, uh, let's give it some food here. So pancake, burger, taco, croissant. And you can give it some variables if you want to. So favorite food is equal to croissant. But uh, it looks like this actually does not work. You cannot give it a some initial vari variables here. 
um, if it's a global enumeration. So yeah, I'm not sure why that is, but uh, yeah, you can't do it, I guess. So that's okay. So we could do, we just copy this or cut it and put it down here if we want to. So now it works, it's valid. So we can give it some initials if we want to. We could say another food if we want to, if we would give it another one. And yeah, that's pretty much how that works. Um, if we want to, we can print this out. So see out favorite food and it should get the value of three into the console. So just run this real quick. And yeah, we get three, perfect. So now let me show you something kind of interesting here. So what if we were to make two different enumerations with the same enumerator? So we'll do a num people and people will have Bob, Billy, Joe, Randy, and Cletus. I'm not sure how you spell Cletus, but there we go. And then we'll have another one called Dork. And Dork will have Ralph, Joe, Sandy, and Brock. And as you can see here, um, there's a bit of a problem here. So it doesn't like that there's two different enum or two of the same enumerator inside of two different enumerations. So that's not a thing you can do, but you can make this valid if you turn this into a strongly typed enumeration. So put class after enum and then put class after this one too. And a num classes are otherwise known as strongly typed enumerations. So that's just another type of enumeration we can work with here. And now, as you can see, the you know error went away. It doesn't care that you're using the same enumeration or numerator inside two different enumerations because they're strongly typed. And the reason this works and the reason it doesn't work before is because whenever you have it as a regular enumeration, this means that the enumeration does not have a scope of its own. So it's basically sharing the scope of the entire method with this enumeration. So you can't have two of the same variable names or enumeration or numerators in the same scope. So if you turn this into a strongly typed enumeration otherwise known as a num class, you can uh, give the enumeration its own scope, basically. So um, they don't conf they, so they don't conflict. So these have their own scopes, even though they're in a method here, they have their own scope, so they don't conflict. So that's how that works, basically, okay? So how do we use this, okay? So let's say we want to make a uh, variable of the type people. So we would just put people, person, and let's say we want to use Billy. So how do we use Billy? Normally, we would just do Billy like this. But since it's a strongly typed enum class, you have to specify which enumeration we're using here with the uh, scope resolution operator. So we, well, first we have to say which enumeration we're using. So we're using people. And then we put the scope resolution operator, dot, uh, which is two uh, colons here. So colon, colon. And then we could specify which enumerator we want to use inside of that enum class. So we can say uh, Billy. And now it's able to figure out which Billy we're using, okay? So that's the same thing for if we want to make a dork here. So if we make a dork, so uh, dork um, dork one is equal to, and let's say we want to use Sandy as our dork. We would have to sp specify Sandy by using dork dot dot Sandy. And again, the dot dot, the colon colon is a scope resolution operator, which is something we're going to be using very soon when we get into classes, okay? So again, this is just to specify which um, a num class you're using it from, which scope you're using it from. And we can do some more stuff, like let's say we have an if statement here. So if uh, person is less than Randy, so how would we do that? Normally we would do Randy, but in this case we have to do people Randy. So it knows which, uh, so it knows where Randy is coming from. It's coming from people, right? The people type. So per if person is less than people Randy, then that's going to be true. So we'll see out. Wow. So that should be valid, of course, because uh, person, which is currently Billy here, Billy is indeed, uh, you know, lower than Randy in terms of the uh, constant that is behind the enumeration. And if we look here, we can see that Billy is indeed lower than Randy in terms of the constant that is assigned to each enumerator in the enumeration. So if we run this, we should see wow into the console. So let's test that out now. Yep, there we go. We get wow right there. All right, so that's pretty cool. And one more thing I want to show you for enum classes. You can also, so normally whenever we try and print out a enum enumeration, we would just get the integer printed out to the console. So if we have a simple enumeration here, like a num color, red, blue. If we were to print out, uh, let's see here, uh, let's make a variable of that type. So color one is equal to blue. Get rid of that. So if we were to print out color, we should get uh, one to the console, right? Because zero and then one. 
So behind the scenes, this is going to be converted back into an integer, which is represented by the enumerator. So see out color one and line, we should get one into the console. So let's see here. And there we go, we get one, perfect. But let's see what happens when we try printing our um, one of our strongly typed enumerations here. So if we were to try and print out person, what would happen? Let's see. So person. And in this case, you can see that it has a little bit of error here. It says uh, no operator, whatever matches arguments. So basically what this means is that we have to explicitly cast this to an integer. It's not going to do it automatically like it would with a normal enumeration. We have to do it ourselves. So we'd have to do static cast, um, turn this into a integer here, and then uh, press enter, and then put the person, the thing that you want to cast it from. So person is going to be casted into an integer. So that's how you would do that. So you have to explicitly cast it from a enumeration or enumerator in this case into a integer, as you can see. So we get one, which is Billy in this case, right? Person is Billy. So zero, one, and we get one into the console when we, yep. So those are the two of the biggest differences between the strongly type enumeration and the regular enumeration. So um, those would be the scope resolution operator to target which enumerator you're using. And also you have to explicitly cast the, uh, enumerators back into the integer values if you want to access access those uh, integer values. So just be aware of those changes and you'll be good to go. And uh, yep, so, all right, so that's pretty much all I'm gonna show you. That's how you can uh, declare enumerations and variables all in one line. So it's very convenient and concise. And also how you can use enum classes to have two of the same enumerators in one enumeration or two different enumerations. If you have any questions about what I showed you this episode, feel free to leave a question in the comment section below or join our Discord server. We have a big Discord server with over 1,300 members last time I checked, so if you need any help at all with your programs, you can hop into one of these help channels and get some help. You can also just hang out and get some new friends if you want to, so just make sure you click the invitation in the description below. Don't forget in the description below, I'll also leave a link to the code for this episode so you can come back to it at any time and use it as a reference. I'll leave good detailed comments around the code so you can have a good explanation in text form too, in case you don't want to watch my awesome videos again. One final thing I want to tell you about, if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. If you join, you can get cool perks like a special Discord rank on my server, early access to these videos, and you get shouted out like you see on the screen right now. If that sounds good to you, feel free to join for like I said, as low as 99 cents a month. Alright, that's it. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.